Good morning, everybody. Um, here we are. It's Saturday morning here where I am. Um, so I suppose I should say good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on where and when you're watching this. Um, so here we go. I'm about to add some colour to this. That was an intentional splash of some paint I'd already got on my brush, so apologies for that. I'm about to add some colour to my previous drawing of um, of this derelict barn um, up in Wensleydale. And I'm going to start, as I always do, with adding colour to anything, whether it's a sketch or a commission. Usually the biggest area is that needs a wash in is usually the sky. So I'm going to start now and add this pre-prepared wash of cobalt blue. Um, and I always add this first because it's usually the the area that needs longest to dry. I'm being very, very sketchy. I'm not being very careful. This brush, um, people have asked about these brushes. This is a size 12. It's a synthetic brush. Um, I bought a box of these on eBay about five or six years ago. I think it was an art shop closing down. Um, I've got some really, really proper painters, professional brushes. Um, I just can't stop buying kit, you know, sketchbooks, paper, pens, brushes. Um, so I've got some fantastic mops, squirrel mops and all kinds of really high end brushes like sables. <laughs> But you know what, these these synthetic ones, see if I've found another one, or are they all downstairs? Um, no, I think they're all downstairs, actually, the others. So, um, as I say, I've been using them. They're abused. Uh, I, I um, kind of don't treat them well. I, don't, I never clean them. I just rinse them out and stick them back in my box. Um, and they haven't lost a, sin a single hair or a filament or anything in, in all that time of uh, that I've been using them um, and I keep going back to them they dried look they hold lots of water they go to a nice point and you, they still hold enough that I can get in this size sketchbook which is a5 two a5 side by side um, and they hold sufficient paint and what I'm trying to do get into the habit of is making a note at the side of the margin of a <laughs> don't think you can see it no you can't see it look i'll move it make a note in the margin of the um of the, the, the paint colors i've used um so i can refer back and see what works and what didn't right okay so that's the sky and i'm um apologies for this weird thing it's because i extended the drawing if you remember in my last video i extended it to the left um this is the stitching in this in my C White sketchbook. Um, sorry, I didn't tell you what these brushes were. These are Japanese made, and, and the only name on them is the word Inscribe Series 2000. And I've tried to look them on the internet, and I can't find any more. Um, so I'll just have to keep going with these. I've got about 15, 15 20 of them left. Um, right, so the next thing... Um, what I'm going to do is try to get some really bright light greens in. So I'm mixing some green gold here. It's a Daniel Smith colour, green gold, with some cadmium yellow. Um, I'm going to try and get this. These aren't very wet washes. Um, and I'm trying to be more accurate and get some colour behind these fence posts. Although to be fair, I already know um, that I intend to go over these in, in paint. And for me, this this triangle that I've just put colour in there, it's one of the most important bits of the composition because um, when I get round to adding shadows, <laughs> That will dry. Let's go back over there. 
I'm hoping that will dry light enough and bright enough. Right, here we go. So what I'm going to do now is to... Sorry, let me show you the palette I'm using. This is another um, Winsor & Newton folding outdoor sketch palette. With the exception of those two pans. Uh, those are half pans. I think they're Winsor & Newton half pans. These are all empty half pans that I've filled with some favourite colours from... from um, from Daniel Smith and this is a green I'm going to use and what I like to do is to try it out put that down um, I want to get this is a fairly wet wash um, along there and what I like to do there you go this is what I was trying to make happen are these lovely I'm just putting some almost neat pigmenting look um, and try and get things to try and get colours to mix on the paper um, and because I think let's just try and get a bit more there you go some some colour there that's um, that's a bit of pre-mixed it's quinacridone gold and a bit of sienna just to make the hopefully make the give the illusion the impression of some um, kind of dried grass there uh, and again I'd at the drawing stage I'd deliberately I'd kind of planned um, not to have not to use any color in this wall because I think I, I really quite like the the strength of the lines the contrast against against all this now that's going to blossom so let's get rid of that um i'm going back to the green now adding a lot more water to the green because i want over here up on the hills i just want this now hopefully the sky has dried sufficiently that i'm not going to get any bleeding through of the colour although if it happens you know it's not not really the end of the world is it it's uh, it's only a sketch after all um let's pick up some of my there's uh, some green gold um sorry should have reached across and this this green look that i'm using now is a fantastic green from daniel smith called undersea green and it's a very dark green, but what I like is the fact that you can add other, you can add blue to it to make it really dark. Look, some cobalt there has made that really dark, and the undersea green is itself is really dark. Um, and I'm hoping this is sufficiently damp enough to to bleed in. Um, Let's get a watery strand of that up here in the background. Again, I'm not um, deliberately shying away from much detail or strong colours up here. Um, because that would actually, to my mind anyway, that would that would kind of detract it would draw your eye away from from the um from the focus which my chosen focal point is this derelict barn obviously um and i'm dropping almost neat pigment look of of um quinacridone gold in here just to just to liven up and add some interest um There you go. So I think what we'll do, because a lot of this, a lot of this is still relatively wet, uh, and I'm very near. Um, I'm going to add some colour to the barn, and but the most important thing is let's just refresh your memory about the reference photograph. The thing that stands out for me is this beautiful shadow. So um, I'm going to pause there. 
and let that dry and come back to it and add more colour, but most importantly, the shadows.